So Skull and Bones has been out for at least 24 hours now, and I've played about 10 of them. So I think it's the first time, or well, the best time, to give you my first impressions and reviews and why I think you should buy it. So as many of you know, this game has had a lot. I mean, a lot of negativity where a lot of people are saying, oh my God, it's been out for 10 years. It's a PlayStation 2 game. I, I've, I've probably heard everything about this game. Like It's just constantly getting delayed. It's never going to come out and it's terrible. That is completely wrong. However, I do know many of you are not going to like this game. But then also I do know a lot of you are going to like this game. But a lot of you are probably not going to give it the chance or even try it to find out for yourselves how good it is. That's why I want to make this video so you can actually understand how good this game is. Yet again, it is still only the first 10 hours of me playing. However, I have hit max rank in the game and I've been playing it a lot. And I've done a lot of customizations so I can kind of understand it. But... This is the confusing part, because if I was to tell you what game is this most similar to, it's going to really confuse you, like it does me. This, in effect, is a looter shooter, right? But you're a pirate, and you're at sea. So it's a looter shooter where you would obviously have all these mechanics to make the best build. So if I was to compare it to another game, this game, made by Ubisoft, so it makes sense, is Division at Sea. I'm going to get a lot of criticism for that, but this definitely is the Division at Sea. However, the... The builds are a lot more in depth, so there's so much more you can customize on this game. Not only do you get a ship, some cannons, and off you go. Every single thing that you do related to that ship contributes to the build. So, the cannons. There are several different types of cannons. But each type of cannon also can have a different effect or status effect or ability so ones can cause fire ones can cause flooding ones can cause piercing ones have long range ones have short range ones are like shotguns there is so many different types of cannons that you can put on your ship now it's not just the cannons it's different armors so the armors can do everything it can make your ship lightweight so it moves faster so it causes more ramming damage so it has more armor there is also several different armors that you can put on your ship so we're not just talking about cannons with fire and then the armor we're also talking about furniture no i'm not playing sims and i'm not decorating my ship you can decorate your ship though which is really cool but the furniture also adds stats to the game so depending what you have there's certain ones which is furniture which is additional ropes or better ropes for your sails which makes your ship go faster or has faster acceleration because you can pull it quicker then you've got different cannon mechanisms or grinders for your cannons to make it so the projectiles go faster so they do more damage or so it does more fire damage or so your ship has better ramming power yet again there is so much diversity on just the furniture and we're not just done there with the ship you can also not customize the ship more. There's there's all them different things that you can customize the ship with. But then there's actual player stats. So there's consumables. In this game, the easiest way to make the consumables in a category is making it food for your sailors and yourself. So there'll be different foods that you consume which will give you better repairing, better morale, better stamina, better damage. Just because you or, or th th there'll be different foods that make it so when you're when you do a boarding action or when you do a shooting action from your your players to the other ship that it does more damage because the morale's higher because of the food that they ate. Could it make sense? Probably not. But well, I don't know. Give everyone a steak dinner and then throw them on a pirate ship and fight, or give them some beans on toast. There might be a bit of difference in, in morale. So yeah, I, I can understand it, but not not to this extreme. So that's the ships out of the way, and obviously. No, it's not. That's not the ships out of the way. There's more. So there's different types of ships. You've got your starting ship, which is a dowie, which is this tiny little dinghy boat, which has got use later on in the game. It's not just the start of the game. You've got it. You finish it. You forget about it. No, that is the only ship that you can use for fishing because you, on it, you can't fire your cannons when you hold the left trigger or right mouse click, I think it is on PC. You don't aim your cannon. You hold a spear in your hand and you fish with it. Or you fry a shark or you do stuff like that. So the doubt and it can only get into certain areas. Some ships can't get into certain areas because the, the entrance way is too narrow. So the only thing that could do it is the dinghy. So there's there's gonna be quite a lot of uh, cool things to do with that ship. But then in the beta, there's like several other ships as well. I know at launch is gonna be 10. There is definitely not 10 in the beta, and you can only reach a certain rank, which I've reached max. And but the, however, I'm not using the best ship that I could use 
for my rank. Or that's what you think, at least. Because the highest ship doesn't actually mean make it the best ship. The first DPS ship's probably, at endgame, going to be one of the best ships in this game. But the one I'm using, I'm using for a very specific mechanic. So I really want to dominate in PvP in the open beta. And I think I might have figured out how. So let's give you an example. The first ship that you get, the first DPS ship that you get, has extra ramming power. When the sails are damaged, it can move better. It actually has got better mobility because it's a smaller ship. So, a big ship, let's say the one that I'm on right now, if I was to lower the sails, it still has a motion and it's very hard to turn. So you've basically got to keep a constant flow in order for it not to crash into every single ravine wall. But the first ones are so agile and so mobile that they can swash in and out of ships and get around and they've got ramming damage and this, that and the other. But that's not just the mechanic. So the cannons, put a widescreen, put in three parts. So you've got two, one block here, one block here, and one block here. You've got three blocks, yep. Yeah? So let's just put two lines down with all three parts. Now your front cannons will be fired from the first part if they're in front of you. And then you'll, you'd have to turn to fire your right side cannons and then you'd have to turn again to fire your left side cannons. Now a big ship struggles to turn because a big ship's very slow and like I was saying before, so in theory, when you get into combat, you will only use either your front facing or your side facing or maybe one and two while you're transitioning. But a small ship has a main, major advantage because what it can do in effect is it could come up to you ram you hit you from the side and it's not just limited to that reload time on that one side so yeah the cannons have reload times and other pros and cons about them but it can also because it's so agile and so small it can turn from left to right so quick so it can actually in effect use all of them so while they're reloading on this side they could be firing with this side so it just goes shooting from that side shooting from the front shooting from that side and just keep rotating back around so in theory your front cannons you want to have quite a quick reload time because they're going to be the ones that you use in all the intervals so you want it to be able to go quite quick these can be quite slow reload times with a lot of damage because you've got the time because you're going from left to right now that's the first ship so that's where you can make a build from that that's where the diversity comes in however the ship that i'm using has got 20 percent additional weapon damage so it's going to hit like a truck. But the ship also has a blaze damage. Now, a blaze damage is set in another ship on fire. So why would that be a good thing? Well, initially, I've got more damage. So I'm trying to make the highest DPS ship. But all my cannon slots are so on this ship. You can have front, back, and side cannons. And you can actually get cannons with fire on. It's not easy. You have to find it, unlock it, craft it, do whatever you've got to do. But all my cannons have fire. So I'm not just stacking up from the extra 20% damage. I'm using it to maximum effect. And anyone who gets close to me on my sides, I've got like basically shotgun cannons. They fire like a shotgun, absolutely blitz anything close. An NPC, I one shot from the side. And then I've got long range cannons on the front and the back. So if someone's in front of me, I can shoot them down from really far. And if someone's behind me, I can shoot them from really far. And the furniture is, if they're over 320 meters, then you've got 100% more damage to that ship for every other shot after the first shot connects at that range. So that's why I'm using my long range and then I've got my short range. So if they do get come in close to ram, I'm just going to blitz them out of the water. Then I've got my blaze, which is con constantly ticking effect, like it's constantly damaging them. So if you're in PvP and they're reloading, they're still constantly taking damage. I think this is probably going to be one of the best builds, but maybe the first one where you've got the ramming is going to be a really good build as well. There's so many different DPSs. There's also different tank builds for ships. So there's some ships that are tanks, and there are obviously some that are DPS. And this is where, yet again, I was going to say, don't rule out the first ship, because the first ship, yes... Its hull is a lot sm uh, a lot smaller than the bigger ships, so it can't take as much damage. Because the bigger ship that we can see right now can take 50,000 damage, and the small one can only take 22,000, I believe. But there is armors that you can put on your hull, which can increase it by 27,000. So in fact, the smaller ship can still have the same amount of armor as the higher ship. You're gonna have lacking on furniture space, but it's gonna be so nimble and gonna be able. To it's just got a lot more. I just say it's a lot more difficult to use. But I reckon someone who masters one of the first ships is actually going to have a better ship than one of the people that have got the biggest ship. There's healing ships. So there's ships in this game that support, that fire weapons at another ship. Don't know how. Maybe they fire bandages or something. But them ships are actually going to be a support ship and they're going to heal your other ships. Let's just say Division. Because in Division, there's weapons that you shoot at people and it heals them. So we'll just put it into that concept. But yeah, the game mechanics in this are so diverse. The team play is so diverse. The, the areas where you're going to go against the big ships are so diverse. The game is absolutely incredible. I could speak about this all flipping day with you guys. How the good this game is. I really strongly recommend you downloading the beta and playing it for free. 
And uh, my only con for the game is if you go on land, because if you go on land, there is too many cutscenes. Ignoring the fact of land and playing purely at sea, I'd give this game a 9 out of 10. So guys, that's enough of me talking. If you want to hear more of this after my first reviews, like, obviously, if you want to help out the channel. Subscribe if you want more of this. And why not check out the next video? Peace.